Hey guys, so I do a tremendous amount of video analysis. For you guys that don't know, video analysis in tennis is basically when a student sends me video of their strokes, whatever stroke it may be, and then I carefully analyze the stroke, I send them back a video, and then they try to improve that stroke. And this is a really, really effective way of coaching someone. This is somewhat of a modern way of coaching that didn't exist uh, back in the day so much because now everybody's got easy access to camera, slow motion footage and so on. So I've been able to improve a lot of players strokes through video analysis. And also I have improved my own teaching abilities through doing tons of video analysis. I've discovered many things that a lot of recreational players have in common as far as problem areas on the strokes. And I have developed very effective progressions and methods how to correct these technical deficiencies. And I get players of all levels from beginners to professional players. And in today's video, I want to show you a very interesting analysis that I performed for a high level female player. So I've made several videos about the WTA forehand. And basically what people refer to when they say WTA forehand, they talk about the backswing and the fact that the racket goes on the opposite side of the body. If you take a look at an ATP forehand, the racket will stay on the hitting side of the body. Many coaches are worried about this. They see this as a technical deficiency. I don't. I do not see this as a technical deficiency whatsoever. Why? Because some of the greatest female forehands of all time have this type of take back. You have to understand that this is the elite level of the WTA. These are some of the greatest female players in the history of the game. And the way I approach the game of tennis is I take the absolute best players in the world and I set them as the benchmark for the correct technique. So for me to sit here and say that Simona Halep, Serena Williams, Venus Williams, Maria Sharapova, Victoria Azarenka, and the list goes on and on. If I sat here and said that these players have horrible forehands, that is maybe the most ridiculous thing a tennis coach could ever say. A tennis coach should take those players forehand and like I said, treat it as a benchmark on how to coach players. But it's not quite so simple. It's complicated, okay? The forehand is one of the most complex shots in tennis. And even on the WTA Tour, you will see players who have more of an ATP type of preparation. At the same time, even on the ATP Tour, you will see some players who have a larger backswing and some even go behind the body. WTA style. Now, if you followed me for a while, and especially if you're familiar with my teaching methodology that's called intuitive tennis, you know that there are certain elements on all strokes, but especially the forehand, that are intuitive. And so is the WTA style backswing. Here's why I say this. The vast majority of tennis coaches, I would say 99.99% will teach an ATP style forehand. So how is it possible then that when you look at the elite level on WTA, you still see this type of backswing, even though nobody teaches it. The only explanation for that is that this type of take back, this type of preparation on the elite level at the WTA is coming natural to these players. And this brings me to the video analysis that I performed for a high level female player, Becca Weissman. She is a really good player. She played for USC. University of Southern California, the school where Steve Johnson played. This is an elite division one level program. And you better believe that all the players who are on those teams are phenomenal players. And she sent me a video of her forehand and she was worried about her technique. I'm gonna read you what she said and I'm gonna show you the video. Hi, I am a former D1 player, Southern California, and I came across your kinetic chain video. I have always had a feeling that mine is off with my firing of hips and shoulder. I am coaching now and I'm always wanting to improve my knowledge. Would you be able to look at my short video and let me know your thoughts? Appreciate all your content. So of course I took a look at Becca's forehand and the first thing that I do when I conduct my video analysis, I will just look at the stroke. I will not play, play it in slow motion. I will just look at it for maybe five minutes or so because a lot of times simply by looking at it, simply by 
um, observing the optics of it, I can get some hints to what problems a specific player might be having with their technique. And then once I have my hints, what I ha once I have my assumptions, then I go more into depth and I start uh, slowing down the video, I start pausing the video to try to confirm my assumptions. So when I was looking at Becca's forehand, obviously on first glance, it looks like a great forehand. But then as I'm watching it, I can notice that when Becca's racket goes into the lag position it's very much visible meaning that when the racket is about to go forward that part of the stroke happens extremely fast so if you take a look at any player and that moment of the forehand when the forehand is viewed in real time is not visible to the naked eye however on becca's forehand it is visible i can see the racket lag and i can see the racket going forward and what that means is that there's most likely a conscious slowing down of the stroke in that particular phase in order to achieve certain technical elements. So I responded to Becca the following thing, your forehand is great, you are a high level player. When I look at your forehand, I suspect that the prep phase and the racket drop was tinkered with unnecessarily so, and it doesn't look fluid. The racket drop is a tad early and the sequencing of the acceleration is off. Having said that, it's still a great forehand and you strike it well. I don't know your history. I am making assumptions. It is possible that this type of take back comes natural to you. In any case, I would wait to initiate the take back until the ball bounces on your side. That way the racket has to accelerate faster and the racket movement wouldn't be so visible in real time. That's the only thing I see. Everything else looks perfect. So let me explain to you in a little more detail what I wrote to Becca. So my assumption was that there is some kind of conscious tinkering of the prep phase on her forehand. And what I mean by that is that most likely uh, Becca saw her forehand on tape and she saw that the racket was going behind the body. You can see right here that the racket is going on the opposite side of the body. Now also, like I already said, the racket is visible in the forward phase. So my assumption is that most likely she was worried about her racket going too far back and she tried to keep the racket on the hitting side of the body. Why? Because most coaches, most players believe that there's something wrong with going too far back when in fact there's absolutely nothing wrong with the WTA style forehand. If there was something wrong with it, then it makes absolutely no sense that uh, Serena Williams, Maria Sharapova, Victoria Zarenka made tens of millions of dollars with those forehands if they're wrong. This doesn't make any sense. So if I gave you a more detailed technical analysis, why those type of WTA forehands are okay is for the simple reason that even though the players that take the racket further back than usual, they go on the non-hitting side of the body, they are still making perfect contact on the forehand. How is the perfect contact established on the forehand? Well, the forehand has to be struck with the dominant shoulder in front. Now the sequencing of the torso rotation on a forehand like that is going to be different from an ATP forehand. In other words, a WTA player will open up much sooner than an ATP player. So when the racket goes further back, the racket has a little bit of a longer path to travel. So that means a WTA player with that style will open up sooner and the contact would be established at the correct place uh, with a dominant shoulder in front. So obviously Becca has proper contact on her forehand because she's a high level player. You cannot play at the high level. You cannot play for USC if you can't make proper contact on the forehand. It's just absolutely impossible. So her sequencing of the torso rotation is correct. The place where she makes contact is absolutely correct. However, the forehand didn't look perfect to me because again, I thought there were some con conscious adjustments in the take back phase and the racket was slowing down. So in other words, her forehand could accelerate much faster. Her forehand could be more fluid. And overall, it would feel better for her and it would grow her confidence even more. And one thing that you have to understand about the forehand stroke is that the earlier you initiate the take back phase, the more hitches you will develop and the more the racket will have to slow down. Because if you want your forehand stroke to be continuous, you have to wait. At the high level, players wait until the ball bounces on their side to initiate the stroke. That's how they achieve a continuous fluid stroke and that's also how they achieve maximum acceleration.
So what I told Becca to do was exactly that. I told her to wait a little bit longer because then she can get rid of that hitch. She can get rid of that slow phase in her lag where I can visibly see the racket moving. By her waiting longer and not thinking so much about what's happening back there, just letting it happen naturally, her forehand will become more continuous, more flowing and it's going to accelerate faster. So take a listen to Becca's response after I wrote her that message. Hi there. Thank you so much for your feedback. I actually watched your kinetic chain video and I went out and played today and you're exactly right in your assumptions in that I was like obsessed for a period of keeping everything on the right side of my body. So I like manufactured it and it just was not flowing. So I was holding um, my take back like my prep a little bit longer and allowing the flow to happen a little bit more, more naturally and clearing my left shoulder seemed to help so much in terms of my contact it felt so much connect so much more connected to my body but obviously at the right time so I think holding my prep a little bit longer so that way like you said it can initiate the take back um more quick through the contact zone so that was super super helpful I appreciate it see what happens with um a lot of female players they they try so hard to keep everything on the right side like the men do and often um, it doesn't really lead to improvement and then once you start hitting your forehand the natural way it sometimes might end up going um, a little bit on the left side on the take back and I think yours does a little bit so I don't see that as a problem at all because you're making contact at the right place and you have good timing so um, that's something that a lot of uh, coaches worry about with female players I don't, uh, just based on the fact that um, many of the greatest forehands on the WTA um, go a little bit further back than usual. So, uh, in my opinion, that's trying to correct that can lead to some serious problems. Yes, I could not agree more. It's so funny because growing up, my forehand was like my favorite shot. And then my senior year of high school, I started tinkering with it, keep trying to keep it on my right side. And I feel like since then, I've had such a weird disconnect with my timing because everyone would be like, you have a great forehand. But then when I would get into matches, I would just get so in my head about the technique and blah, blah, blah. So um, I feel like now I'm going back into what feels <laughs> intuitive, what you were, what your whole message is about and it feels so pure again so thank you thank you for the feedback and i appreciate all of the stuff you post i have learned a lot and now you can take a look at becca's new and improved forehand with that simple tip of not worrying about where the rack is going keeping everything natural you can see that the forehand it looks more continuous it looks more fluid it's more smooth and she's able to accelerate it much more her timing has improved and overall the feeling that she has when she strikes her forehand like this is much better, which will allow her uh, to gain more confidence in the forehand. And the fascinating thing about WTA forehands is, and I've had so much experience with female players, is that even though female players are trying so hard to keep that racket ATP style on the hitting side of the body, they a lot of times can't do it anyway because many parts of the forehand stroke are indeed intuitive so even though they're trying to keep the racket on the hitting side the racket still ends up going behind the body because that's what comes natural to them they have absolutely no control over what the racket does and it's very difficult to be conscious of the part of the forehand where the racket is traveling very fast and it does travel quite fast when the racket hits that phase where it's going behind the body so obviously what a lot of players will do to bypass this problem they will slow their forehand way down some players will even completely freeze it in the racket drop area and those two things will completely destroy a forehand. I don't care if you're male or female, if you are tinkering with the racket drop, if you're slowing it down, or even worse, if you're freezing the racket drop, you are gonna destroy your forehand, just like Becca did. That's why she reached out to me because her forehand simply didn't feel right. And by doing this simple adjustment, by not worrying about that part of the forehand, by having the correct timing, now the forehand is more natural, it's more flowing, it's more continuous. It accelerates much faster. She has a better feeling about it. She's growing her confidence in her forehand. And that is the path for success.
So what can you take out of my analysis for Becca? Well, the problem is that tennis is a complex game and every player is going to have their own individual issues that need to be corrected and generalizations are going to be tough to make for all the shots. However, there are going to be some fundamentals that everybody needs to apply. But when it comes to the backswing or the racket drop, this is where style comes into play. And you're probably asking yourself, so does that mean, Nick, that we can just take the racket back as far as possible? And no, it doesn't necessarily mean that. There is such a thing as making a late contact because of a preparation that's too large. That is absolutely something that is a problem. But it is a complex answer to that problem because it depends on many factors. So if indeed someone has a take back that's occurring on the hitting side of the body and all of a sudden that player would start taking the racket further back, yes, uh, that type of player will make late contact on pretty much all the forehands because they don't have the right muscle memory for this type of take back and also most importantly they don't have the right sequencing of the torso rotation when the racket goes further back. So let me explain that in a little more detail. So if somebody has an ATP style preparation where the racket is dropping on the hitting side, in this particular setup the waiting phase on the forehand can be much longer. In other words, the player can wait to initiate the torso rotation until the racket is on the bottom portion of the racket drop. This is not the case when the racket goes further back. You cannot wait that long. In other words, now, because the racket is coming from a further place, it's coming from behind the body, players have to open up sooner. So on the WTA, you will often see a position on the forehand where the non-dominant arm is going forward while the racket is directly on the other side of the body. That is an indicator that the rotation started earlier compared to an ATP forehand because here's the fact, whether it's WTA or ATP, players will always make contact with the dominant shoulder in front when they're striking the forehand well. Yes, sometimes they will get caught behind, but on the vast majority of forehands, the contact will be established with that dominant side in front. This is the case for the WTA and for the ATP. But where the difference lies is how the sequencing of the torso rotation is structured. Let me repeat it again. On ATP style forehand, because the racket has a shorter path here, players will wait longer and they will start opening up when that racket hits the bottom portion of the racket drop. On a WTA forehand, this is not the case. Players will have to start opening up sooner when the racket is on the top portion of the racket drop. This is where WTA players start to open up so that when they get towards the bottom portion of the racket drop, their non-dominant arm is pointing forward and they're already somewhat open towards the court so that they can make contact in front. So you're probably wondering, Nick, how in the heck do you learn this stuff? This sounds so complicated. Well, actually, nobody learns this because nobody is teaching this. I already told you, 99.99% .99 of all tennis coaches worldwide will teach any player, whether it be WTA or ATP, to put the racket here on the hitting side because it makes sense, it's logical. I'm not blaming anybody for this. But through my research and my intuitive approach to tennis, I was able to establish that there are many different styles when it comes to the take back and there's no right or wrong if fundamentals are present. The things that are important on the forehand is not necessarily how far back the racket will go. The things that are important on the forehand is that the forehand is continuous, fluid, smooth, and most importantly, that acceleration is present because that's what the forehand should be all about. You should be able to accelerate the forehand in a way where you're gonna reach your maximum acceleration around the contact zone. And you can only achieve that by not thinking about how the racket is behaving in this part of the racket. When you have your mind set on what type of take back to execute, you are gonna be forced to slow down that part of the forehand and in turn, you're gonna ruin your acceleration and you're gonna make your forehand worse. This is the case at the recreational level, it is the case at the high level, and it is also the case at the elite level. And that's why you don't see anybody trying to fix Sabalenka's forehand, Madison Key's forehand, Serena Williams' forehand, because there's absolutely nothing wrong with that forehand. In those cases, it's obvious because those forehands are making tens of millions of dollars and nobody would dare to touch them.